When the Dragon King returned, he found that the key was gone, and he knew that his third daughter had allowed it to be stolen. He banished his daughter from the palace, and so she went to live on earth with Sea Girl, and both sang together the whole day long. Later, the women of all the surrounding villages came together each year on the 22nd day of the seventh moon to sing songs. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. My name is Ian Brody. I am the instructor for Folk 2401, English 2601. I believe I have those numbers correct. Currently, as you might see, if you are looking at the syllabus now, uh, that somehow this course has two different names. One group has it listed as oral literature, and the other group has it listed as folk literature. Pay it no mind. That is an administrative error, and you are in the right class. Um, let's move things along with a very sincere... Uh, I wish we were in the same room together right now. I wish that we were gathered. Um, I am not opposed to the idea of distance learning. I'm not opposed to the idea of digital delivery. I'm not opposed to the idea of asynchronous delivered, delivery. But there is something, when it works, there is something quite joyful about being in a classroom. And it is quite normal. And normalcy is something that I think we're all craving right now. I hope you are well. I hope your loved ones are well. I hope wellness comes in all the forms. Um, health, finances, emotional well-being. Um, yeah, and I hope that in the not-too-distant future, we can all gather together like real people and give each other fist bumps and high fives and all the... Oh, whatever form convivial gathering will take in the future. So this course is about um, folk literature. I don't know what your backgrounds are. Some of you are English students, some of you are folklore students, and some of you are taking this because the prereqs don't require you to have a background in either, all of which is cool. Uh, this course is about a particular kind of folklore, a particular kind of performance that occurs uh, regularly. Uh, it occurs internationally. It takes on a variety of forms. They're both culturally specific, but we can still nevertheless discern patterns of familiarity from culture to culture broad enough that you can begin to make very qualified generalizations. And so this course walks you through it. Uh, I don't know what you imagine folk literature to be, what happened when you first signed up for the course, what you think you would be getting, but I think you are going to enjoy it. The course, I've taught this course, uh, not in this particular way, but I've taught this course many a time, and I always like it. Folk literature is sort of half my, my area. It is not something, I'm not a folk tale scholar by any stretch of the imagination. But um, th there's a certain coziness about folk literature that I like, and then it extends into other forms. Um, I'll talk you through. I'll talk you through the semester. Basically, we have um, we uh, cover. As you're going to find out when we do the first reading, for the most part, folk literature has historically been understood as comprising three subcategories. Because we're thinking, when we're thinking folk literature, we're typically thinking prose. And uh, one is the folk tale, one is myth, and then one is legend. And uh, I'm not gonna spoil the distinctions between them, because again, that's basically our very first reading is William Bascom's uh, The Forms of Folklore, Prose Narratives. Uh, but, we are going to be concentrating on just some of those because I also want to extend it into different areas. Uh, the, we are going to begin the course, once we get a couple of introductory readings out of the way, we're going to begin the course by talking about folktale, uh, fairy tale, for lack of a better word, mersion, if you want to start using the fancy folklore term for it. 
We're going to look at them as texts, we're going to look at them as performances, we're going to look at them as types and versions. It is difficult, and I, but I think I have figured out a way, having been teaching this for so long, to, um, I don't know if you know this idea from, uh, jo uh, from joke theory, it's a proverb about analyzing jokes, in that analyzing jokes is like uh, dissecting a frog. And that, yeah, you might understand it better, but you, you end up with a dead frog at the end. Hopefully this class, even though it's introducing you to, for lack of a better word, the mechanics of how folktale operates and how uh, folk stories are generated, um, I hope that actually is a net positive for you and you sort of see it as a wonderment of, of human creativity. So half the course basically is about fairy tale, as and we go from reading them to thinking about them as these creative moments in performance. Uh, the next little bit is sort of my uh, is where we start to sort of transition, um, uh, where we, once we sort of talk more a little bit about performances, we're going to talk about. Um, and that takes us basically to the end of October, we're going to talk about personal experience narrative. Personal experience narrative, as the name of it might suggest, are the stories that we tell about ourselves. Uh, and for a long time, that wasn't considered part of folklore, folklore proper, because when you're thinking about folklore, and when folklorists of old were thinking about folklore. The idea was that it was something that was inherently passed along, that almost there wasn't any creativity to it, or the creativity was in the execution and not in the generation of plots. Um, but personal experience narrative, of course, the whole thing is that this, it, the, the, it's, they're meant to be told, they're meant to be understood as true, and as of happening to the individual who's telling that. Um, but that's a form of meaning making. That's a form of creativity. That's a form of storytelling that is, um, even though it is personal, it's very, um, it's a very traditional way of expressing how we operate in the world. So mainly folktale, then personal experience narratives, and then towards the end, I don't do them justice, but I do discuss some other forms. I talk a little bit about uh, myth and proverbs and jokes and then a little bit about folk poetry. Why don't I talk about those more? Well, this is a 12-week class and there's only so much we can cover and uh, it'll be actually, you'll be surprised how much of the folktale stuff can carry on into the other stuff. Um, but uh, I teach a course in urban legend so I don't really cover legend in this course although we'll be referring to it in the background and in talks and so on. And um, I've decided that one of these days I'm finally going to like bite the bullet and develop a course on folk verse and folk poetry. I think it, that's a whole fascinating area. I want to do, I'm in theory, one of the world's leading experts on certain forms of humor. So I would like to develop a, a folk humor course. And I just want to sort of place it there and joke would fall under that, definitely. Um, so I just want to give you tastes uh, of, of a few things, but, but for the most part, we're going to be covering these two major areas, folktale and personal experience narrative. Um, we're in a strange situation, as you know, and so I've got to introduce these two concepts at the same time. Um, the course needs to have integrity. It needs to sort of be the equivalent of what a three credit course would look like under regular circumstances. So as you go through, you will notice that there is fundamentally the equivalent of a reading for every class that we would be having were we meeting. Um, and so that sort of should give you a sense of the the level of work, the level of intent that's, that's required. But I also know that I don't know anything about your particular situations. I don't know if you're trying to balance work. I don't know if you were trying to balance childcare. I don't know exactly what, what's going on with you. And there might be times when you can't necessarily commit to the, um, in some ways, very arbitrary 
a hard scheduling of going, coming to class twice a week. Coming to class twice a week. I'll get to that point in a second. So the course is designed basically for you to go at your own pace. As you go through the Moodle site, uh, you will find uh, things basically unlocking. Yeah, a section occurs. For example, the first section is on, um, uh, the first section is already open. That's uh, getting started and it begins with these uh, 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 sort of introductory readings about three ways to sort of orient ourselves throughout the course. And then we go about reading tales. We go to tales as patterns. What's the other section? Sorry, I'm flipping back and forth. Performances and contexts, then the personal experience narrative section, and then a taste of other forms. Each section has a little sort of, a, what I call it, a journal entry. Uh, reflections, I think I call them. Uh, the reflections you, <coughs> excuse me, the reflections are reflections. Um, you submit a small piece to that. I mean, you could write it directly in the, in the, in the box, just a couple, a couple of hundred words, less than that even, uh, about you know, what, what you got from this particular section. And then once you submit that, the next section opens up. So there are no real time limits, save for the end of the semester. Um, you can't really progress through the course in a non-linear way. So you do this, you do this, you do this. The course will unfold more or less at your own pace. Um, if you're bored, you can get through this course in the better part of like three or four weeks. There's a couple of things where I put the brakes on because you need to talk to me about various assignments. And so, uh, I mean, even though I'm good at responding, you know, you can, you, there, there's, there's uh, impediments that are thrown in your way. Um, but for the most part, you, you can just breeze through very quickly if you wanted to. Or, I'm not advocating this, circumstances have it, you can like um, fade away for a couple of weeks, come back and be able to catch up. You're, there's no lateness that's, that's really kind of, kind of going to impinge on you. Uh, the other thing has to do with the fact that we're not actually going to be meeting. We're in the timetable as meeting twice a week uh, because... I liked the idea of being able to sort of just carve out a little bit of scheduled time for if we want to get together, either as a group or just simply um, where you know that I will be available at that particular time for, for lack of better words, dropping in. So even though the, the, the timetable schedule is there, uh, I don't know if we're ever going to be meeting, and if we are, if I ever do say, hey, why don't we all get together, I do want to say, first and foremost, it's not, a, not an obligation. There's no attendance that's going to be taken. Uh, it's not something that if you, you can't make it, you are uh, going to be penalized for. I think you might be losing out on the conviviality and maybe the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, but it's not something that you should feel that if you can't achieve that for, for a reason, you uh, are going to be uh, uh, at a loss. The second thing, uh, uh, again, because these are Zoom meetings, I don't want anyone to feel obligated to actually show their face if they don't want to show their face. I'm going to put in a link on the site about how to, uh, just if, if we get together that way, um, how to put uh, an image on your Zoom profile so that's not, I mean, it's not just your name, it could express something about your personality. Uh, I'm sure you're Zoom savvy at this point, but for those who aren't, I'll just throw it out there. I, I, there's nothing, nothing is to be gained by making students uncomfortable for discomfort's sake. So I'm just sort of putting that out there. So we have two major assignments. I have the reflections that I say you need to do. They open up. They are, they are worth things. They're worth, uh, what are they worth? A grand total. Oh, they're worth like 30% of the class. Uh, each one is worth 5%. There are eight, but the lowest two drop. And the lowest two can even be like zeros if you miss. Um, uh, you still need to submit something. So just like, I can't do anything this week. Give me zero. And, and then you'll be able to unlock the next section. But, uh, but that's fine. So blah, blah, blah. then the, the midterm assignment, I'm calling it midterm with all the provisos about that it can be, I can be flexible with dates, is uh, to take a Mersion 
uh, with fairy tale uh, of your choosing and analyze it according to the ways that we're discovering how to analyze it. Looking at its structure, looking at its motifs, looking at its, um, uh, what, are, what are the words, looking at the, 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 the character types, the dramatis personae, the functions, the structure, all the cool stuff, all of which sounds like gobbledygook now, but the whole point is that in this course, by the end of this course, it will not sound like a gobbledygook to you. Um, and then uh, I'm still in the process as of recording this. I'm still in the process of trying to figure out precisely how to um, get you access to it because this was sort of a classic library uh, exam, uh, library assignment where you'd go in and you'd actually sort of direct you to the folktale sections or the folklore sections and you would find, uh, find the tales to your liking. Um, now I can't do that, I gotta use online resources. I've got a couple of friends who are like sending me stuff that I'll be able to sort of put into one big packet of here's, here's links. Um, it's not as cool. I, I'm not actually old fashioned, but there is something very, very um, wondrous about the serendipity of going into a, a, a library and just starting to pluck books off shelves because the spine intrigues you. It's like folk tales of where? and you pluck it, pluck it off and it's like, oh, okay, and you flip through and you come across something. You just don't get that with internet sources. And so, again, I'm not a Luddite, but there's a part of me that wishes that it could be a, a different way. So uh, instructions for how to do that are, are in the syllabus and I'll be giving you more as we go. There's a final assignment and there's two ways of doing it. One is sort of like a uh, suitable for uh, people who like writing research papers, and that is basically a research paper. Uh, it's taking some element of folk literature. It could be a tale. People often, because we spend so much time talking about tales, they often end up being about tales. But uh, when you find something that's sort of live to your experience or um, relevant, you know, explore, explore a tale, explore a joke, explore some kind of narrative uh, in a... Um, uh, by you know, tying it into to relevant literature, do, going outside of the of the literature that we are uh, that you have assigned, and you know, taking a couple of things out of the, the library and databases and so on, which you will be able to access, not through serendipity, but through you know, database searches, you'll be able to find peer reviewed articles, and write a paper about a particular thing. Um, again, details to come. The other is a more creative exercise. And that is to take a piece of folk literature, a traditional piece of um, verbal art, and adapt it in some kind of way. Because we talk about adaptations a lot in this course. So in the past I've had paintings, I've had comic books, I've had uh, YouTube videos, I've had puppet shows, I've had poems, I've had... Um, uh, you know, creative short fiction, um, but basically the adaptation of, of, a, of a traditional tale or a traditional text. Uh, you also need to write a reflective piece. It's shorter than the essay, uh, but a reflective piece about why you chose the tale you did or the, 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 the narrative you did uh, and why you adapted it the way you adapted it, what decisions you made in the process of adapting it for this medium and for this audience. So fill your boots, uh, that, that can be quite fun. Uh, the only stipulation I have about the creativity of it is that you can get it to me in some kind of electronic form. If it's visual art, take pictures of it or scan it and submit it that way. If it's a video, uh, have, provide me some kind of link uh, that, I can, that I can get to it. So, um, I mean, that's, that's the only precondition. Uh, this is not the time to be mailing me canvases, sadly, because it's cool. And my office has a couple of uh, holdovers of old creative projects where people have some, cool, I got some cool ass stuff on my wall. So uh, that's it. Then there's a final uh, take home exam. Obviously everything is take home, but it's just a short writing assignment uh, that's more an opportunity to reflect on certain themes within the course. Uh, and that's due sometime in December. I think December 14th is when I said it. As I said, we have the entire semester to go in at your own pace, but you know, I have this line in the sand, I think it's like the last you know, 11.59 on, 
on December 14th because that gives me time to market and submit grades. Um, yes, so we're not meeting. Uh, courses are going to be, I am going to be recording videos like this, one for basically every reading, and then a couple of additional ones to describe assignments and so on. Um, do the readings, watch the videos, do the reflections, repeat. I'm going to tell you one thing about the videos is that, uh, and I might as well, I'm, I'm, it, it's not a, uh, it's not a dishonest thing at, by any stretch, but I, I want you to know because when you, um, uh, because we are all in this boat, um, we don't, and we don't know what the future holds. The, the videos that I'm recording, I'm trying to keep them in a way evergreen. So I'm trying to keep them so that you can, uh, for example, in future courses, I could potentially use them again. Uh, and I'm not beholden necessarily to the order in which I am uh, teaching at this time. So uh, you, when you come across, you're not going to say, uh, I'm not going to be doing the uh, Dundee's reading and saying, as you remember from Bascom, they're going to all be standalones. Ian talks you through this particular article. The other reason is that I am uh, collaborating with people, uh, with other folklorists, uh, literally around the world, who might also be are desperate for online and digital resources. And so uh, that I'm gonna be, just as I'm probably gonna be borrowing other people's in certain, in certain respects, uh, I'm ha making these available so that anyone can come and grab them. And if they need like a 20 minute discussion on a particular thing, uh, it's available to them. Uh, so, the, so the articles, uh, so the, the videos don't, or uh, the videos don't, uh, aren't, uh, how should I put it? Uh, they're not going to emphasize folk 2401, English 2601. They're, you are their primary, their first audience, but there's a second audience out there. I just want you to, to, uh, to recognize that. The only exception is there might be some where they are going to cross-reference, but they'll be cross-referencing these readings that are inherently cross-referenceable. Um, and that's basically the trifecta of Prop, Holbeck, and Ulrich. Names you don't know yet, names you will love by the end of this semester. So that's basically it. Uh, I am going to put this up. Once you watch the videos and everything, uh, put in the reflections. Again, the, the next section opens up and uh, we're going to get going. Um, I am reachable. I'm reachable through Moodle, um, which connects directly to email, but I'm, I'm reachable through email as well. I have various social media things. I, I don't necessarily go out and make friends with everybody, but I am accessible through those. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna, we're, we're gonna get through this together. I think you will enjoy the class. Uh, I'm reasonably chill, all things considered. That's not, a, that's not something I say easily. It's not some like uh, roll off the, uh, the tongue brag for me. But uh, I think we'll, we'll get through this together. So anyway, uh, I hope you are well. Um, this video will be up as soon as I possibly can. Uh, the first section will be open, basically the first day of classes. And be patient with me because uh, I haven't recorded all of these yet. Uh, and I got two other classes. So in a perfect world, when I say you can rush through them all in September, I'm hoping to have most of them there by the end of September. Uh, but uh, if you come across a section and I've like locked it off, it's because I haven't got the videos up yet. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, be well, my friends. Have a good semester. Uh, I'll be talking to y'all later.